Hey there to my wonderful students. What's up guys? Hey, Dr. Mandis here. Well, not really here, I'm there, but whatever dudes. Anyway, look, to, I just wanna calculate the energy of a phase change. These problems are highly intimidating students. They're freaking algebra one. The only issue is you gotta keep track of everything and know what equations to use. There are only three equations. They're not so bad. There's a specific heat equation, which comes in different formats. I like M delta TCP because it's easier to cancel units. Some students like MCAT, whatever. They like to spell out CAT. But anyway, you have the heating curve, the heating version of things with the specific heat capacity. Then you have your phase change, okay? Underneath the phase change, you got two potentialities. You either got the melting gig with the heat of fusion or the boiling gig with the heat of vaporization. And usually most students, given one of the three, can easily solve the problem. The issue is, what do you do when you have all of them? Like, for instance, if I say, hey, I got a cup of ice. It's going to heat up, melt, and get to room temperature. What do I do? All right. But if you had a cup of ice, it would be at some solid point, heat up melt, get to room temperature. So somehow you got to apply this heating curve to these three equations. And it's not so bad because here's a gig. In that heating curve, you have two spots where your phase changes and you have three spots. Let me get rid of that. Cool. Where you have heating. Well, if the temperature is changing, then use the equation that involves the temperature change. This is going to get ugly, but screw it. Down here where it's heating, you use the one with the temperature change, M delta TCP. If you're in this region of the curve, it's heating, temperature's changing, I should say. Q equals M delta TCP. This region of the curve, Q equals M delta TCP. Wow, that's kind of ugly. It's going to get worse. All right. And here, if you're melting, then you need to use the equation for melting, N delta H of the fusion. If you're boiling and you're up here, eh, use Q equals M, N, I should say, delta H fusion. I mean, vaporization. God, that's freaking ugly. That's horrendous. What else can we do? Well, let's see how else I could write this up for you to see if I can get it across to you. I'll keep on working here. All right. And here, this version is M delta T C P. This is an M delta T C P. This is M delta T C P. Down here, we have N, number of moles, vaporization. Down here, we got N, number of moles, delta H, fusion. You really got to pay attention to where you are on the curve. So. How about we do the example problem and I'll explain this a little bit better. Calculate the heat needed 50 grams of water from minus 10 to 115. That means you're going to start at minus 10. Down here's a solid. Go up, melt, heat, boil. Holy crap, we're right here at 115. So we went from minus 10 all the way up to 115. You cannot do what a lot of slovenly students do. They say, hey, Q equals M, delta T. CP and they do T final minus T initial and they just slap in 115 and 10. You can't do that because you have a boiling and a melting going on. What you really need to do is keep track of everything. And if I could jump down, you know that, hey, you're gonna, whoops, wrong color. You're gonna heat from minus 10 to zero. That's where you're gonna melt. Then you're gonna melt. Temperature stays constant. When you're done melting, you're going to heat up to 100. Then you're going to boil. Then you're going to get up to 115. I just wrote 110 there by accident. But you're going to heat up. So that's a lot. Okay. That's why you end up with this big, giant equation uh, with all the different cues. Some students like to just write out the one equation, plug things into it, and go to town. Some students like to do them as each individual steps. Once you realize what steps you need to do, then it's doable. It's getting an idea of what you need to do, which is why I'm going to beat it up just a little bit here. Okay, here's another example problem I have my students often do. Okay, how much energy is needed to convert 10 grams of ice at minus 5 to liquid water at 40? So you got to realize hey, if I got ice at minus 5, it's going to heat up, it will melt, then heat up to 40. That's three steps out of that whole heating curve. Those three steps need to have three Qs. You can have a Q for the heat, initial heating, Q for a melt, Q for the second heating. 
That's what I wrote over here. Write the subscript, minus 5 to 0, melt, 0 to 40. It looks awkward when you're not used to it, but it really helps you collect your thoughts. If you have a temperature change, you know what you get to use in the temperature change? The one with the temperature change. No temperature change, then no temperature change. Use the equation without it. You have to understand, are you melting? So you got a fusion or a flame. Well, we're going to be melting, so we're a fusion. Cool beans? Then you would just plug your numbers into that wonderful little equation and go to town. Don't know why that ends there. Shouldn't be there. Anyway, just keep track of things. Go back to your heating curves. I know it looks ugly, but keep track of all your equations. There's only three equations. It's algebra one. It's eighth grade, ninth grade algebra. Just plugging things in and solving. I know I flew through it. I know you can do it. Hang in there. Have a great day. Have a good time.